All right, this week I am in downtown Ocala with Brittany from 18th Hour Photography. She is a phenomenal photographer and has been in the business now for 10 years. I'm super excited for you guys to hear her story and her passion to helping brides really tell their wedding story. I truly think in today's world, those that can tell a story successfully will be at the top of their industry via social media and other outlets. So let's dive into the interview. Hi everybody, we are in downtown Ocala in front of one of the awesome murals here. Let us know in the comments if you know which one it is. Um, I'm here with Brittany today, so I'm super excited to tell, you know, interview her and let her story just kind of come to life. We've kind of talked already, so I'm excited for you guys to learn more. So Brittany, tell us about yourself and what you do. Um, I am Brittany. I am the owner of 18th Hour Photography. I have been, um, I'm an Ocala native, been in business for 10 years this past February. I'm a lifestyle and wedding photographer. Um, weddings is really my bread and butter and where my passion is. Um, I consider myself a very emotional photographer, so that's really kind of like my unique way approach to weddings and what makes me different than a lot of the other photographers in town for weddings um, is really just kind of focusing on the, the heart of weddings. Okay, awesome. So kind of just tell us, um, I know we kind of talked about it before, but just go ahead and tell us your story again, maybe in a little more detail and feel free to talk and elaborate as much as you yeah. feel like you want to. So I, um, I bought a camera after my first daughter turned, or my first daughter was born, she's 10 now. Um, and I bought a camera as my way to kind of like capture her and how much she was changing. Um, and I really just fell in love with motherhood. I fell in love with all the little moments in between and they felt like they were just going away so quickly. Um, so I scheduled a couple sessions for her within like the first six to eight months of her life. Um, like just different sessions with photographers in town. And as much as I loved the, the prop setups and you know the cute backgrounds and all the stuff, I felt like it really wasn't what I was looking for. And so I bought a camera off of Amazon, um, spent my entire tax return and poured myself into YouTube and really tried to learn how to shoot manual. Um, then I just started constantly taking pictures of her and I found what I was really drawn towards was the, all the little in-between moments because she saw the world with such wonder because everything was brand new to her. Um, she still sees the world that way. She's, she's a lot like her mama. So she's 10 now, but she, the way she looked at like the way the light danced across the floor in our living room in our little house in the historic district and like just the way she, like a smile would break across her face when she watched our dogs play in the living room. It was all these little things that like I wanted to be able to look back at again later. Um, and so I just took pictures of her constantly. And then um, that became taking pictures for friends and family constantly. And just, I tried to shoot something every day for like the first year that I called myself in business. Um, the business is actually named after her. Okay. Um, the, it's 18th hour photography. So in military time at 6 p.m. Um, it is the time of day that I went into labor with her. And I will always say that her birth was like the catalyst for the rest of my life. So that's where it came from. Okay. I get asked that all the time. Um, but yeah, so I just, I wanted to be a little different than what I was seeing being offered. And I wanted to be able to give people uh, valuable images that they could look back for the rest of their lives and be like, this is something I could never replicate. This isn't a background or a prop I could you know, buy. This is a true harness of like emotion from somebody I loved and cared about and be able to have that image and like look back at it in the future. Okay. So you're saying that, you know, photography, I do think this too is, is can, it can really paint a picture and mm -hmm. it, or it can, it can be very dry and, and, and very, uh, Plain, I guess you could mm -hmm. say. What do you think? Um, what do you think? What you do makes it different? Is it, you know, what, is it just the way you take the photo, the way you edit it? So I, th I think it's a bit of both. Okay. So um, I, one of my things for like the last couple of years of business, since why my shirt says what it says, is that we don't, we're not wedding photographers, we're storytellers. And so my aim when my couple gets their gallery back um, is that it walks them back through their entire wedding day and lets them see moments that they didn't see or experience. So we are absolutely going to take, you know, beautiful bridal portraits of the bride and beautiful lighting and her getting dressed and these, you know, elaborate flat lays of their invitations and florals. And we're going to do all those foundational things. But my goal at the end of the wedding is to provide them things that are going to be so much more far valuable past that wedding day. So it's you know, for some examples, it's photos of the bride's grandfather dancing with the bride's niece, you know, who is the flower girl on the day and dancing the, um, in the reception area and the way her dress twirls through the air and the absolute like unbridled joy on her face. It's a photo of 
the mother of the bride looking around, you know, peeking around a doorway as the bride is getting ready with her bridesmaids. And she's watching 20 years of her life, you know, come up to this moment. It is, you know, the side glance that you get of a groom looking at the bride when they're standing at the altar because he's so nervous, but he really just wants to be able to like completely take her in. It's those little things in between that make wedding photography valuable because it's something that a bride can't communicate that she wants. I mean, she's going to see photos on Pinterest and say, yeah, I want this. I want me in this doorway. I want me and my husband and me looking back, you know, all of those things. And we do all of that. But what I want to be able to give somebody is the stuff that they don't know that they need to ask for. And so many times we have had brides come back years afterwards and say, you know, are we love our portraits. They're all over our house. But the photos that have become the most important to us was you know, like my fo a photo of my uncle Jack telling a story at the wedding, laughing and just complete joy in, in a way that nobody, that's his true laugh. You can't make him do that. Um, or family members talking at cocktail hour and hugging because it's a reunion because they haven't seen each other in five to 10 years, but they're all there on this day to celebrate these people. So it's those photos in between that really bulk up and make a wedding gallery so, so valuable. Do you, um, do you stage any of that? Or, cause you'd mentioned like the mom, like looking around the door. Is that like your, like, do you, this is, I do this in a sense too when I talk to people when I come up with social media ideas. Mm -hmm. So like I envision something for yes. them. Do you do the same thing? So yes and no. So okay. we do both. Okay. So I will always, you know, set up, you know, a lot of the times I tell my brides like while you're getting ready and you're getting your hair and makeup done, I'm going to take photos of that happening. But a lot of women, myself included, don't want photos of their hair and rollers and half of face of makeup done. And like you want to feel and look your best. So during those moments is when we're trying to get the other things that are happening. Um, we will always stage a bride, you know, putting on her earrings in a soft, flattering way and putting her jewelry on and mom buttoning up details on the back of her dress. We do all of that. Um, but my aim is always to fill the in-between. So when the bride is getting ready and she's laughing in a room with all of her girlfriends and her mom has just finished getting dressed and she's coming in to help her get dressed, but she takes that little moment and she looks and there's that like from a motherhood perspective, it's it's a home feeling of like, I can't believe I've gotten to this point with this little girl and this is where we are. And you can see it all over the image. But if I was focused on painting a beautiful picture of the bride, I would have missed that. And so we really try and do, do both as much as we can. Now, do you, like I, with the staging part, so are you just walking around waiting for them, like for those moments? Or are you, like, is that ready to happen and you, you stage it? I'm just curious. So it's, it's both. So okay. the, one of the nice parts about um, the way we do wedding photographers is I work with a second shooter. Um, I met my best friend in nursing school. We've been attached to the hip ever since. Uh, two years, almost three years ago, I taught her to start shooting weddings with me. So we do them together. So we try and angle it towards one person is really focused on, you know, the like foundational parts of the wedding and the other person is just searching constantly. Okay. So um, oftentimes during the wedding day, you'll find when I'm shooting like formal portraits of the bride and groom, she's at cocktail hour being a creep, like walking <laughs> around people with a long telephoto lens, like grabbing that little stuff okay. that people don't realize is happening. Um, so we try and do both at one time. Now I will say there are moments that we set up. So we do, um, I like to do, especially if the bride is particularly close with either her, her, her dad or somebody that's like a father figure in her life. Um, we do like a first look with the bride okay. and dad. So I will have dad, and this is kind of a way that we gear that I'll have dad face away from the bride. Um, we have the bride come up behind him and tap him on the shoulder and then turn around mm -hmm. and see her. But right before that happens, I tell dad to get a really solid image of his head of what she looked like at five years old. Okay. like walking into kindergarten so that cripples men so <laughs> that's always a really good way to be like he's ready to have that visual comparison of what she looked like at that moment and what she looks like now as a bride and that transition is always like a huge tear trigger oh okay, definitely can tell that i kind of like want to get emotional too, just like <laughs> thinking about that because i yeah I, I have a very visual mind so when when you're telling me i'm like envisioning that yeah. like and i recently got married so i can kind of congratulations thank you so i can i kind of get the whole i get it yeah so i mean i definitely definitely put like a lot of detail into yeah. your work i don't think all photographers do that and I just, like I said, I'm an emotional person. I cry at every wedding. Um, it's embarrassing. And it is often like, because I get very emotionally invested in my clients. I do, all of our bridal cu uh, couples do an engagement session with us. It's like a good practice for them on the wedding day of how we work, how I pose them, awesome. what that whole process is going to look like. Um, but I am constantly texting my brides. How's wedding planning going? 
Do you need help? Do you need vendor recommendations? Are you stressed out? Here's a $5 Starbucks gift card. Like I get very invested in that whole year prior to the wedding day because my thing is when I get to the wedding day, you have to spend 10 hours with me. I don't want to feel like a stranger. Um, I want to feel like another guest at the wedding or a close friend that just happens to be taking your wedding photos. You need to feel comfortable enough to be vulnerable. And so we have to invest that time and energy into our clients. Otherwise, the result is not going to be the same at the end. That's kind of leads me into where I want to kind of take the conversation and go into. It's such a big thing right now, like on social media and just in overall with AI and like yes. overtaking. Um, and so like since it is the social bridge and I do highlight social media and anything technology based that's in our world yeah. that is really shaping and forming entrepreneurship in, in all kinds of ways, good, bad, and the ugly. And so I like to highlight that. And so yeah. you're talking about like creating all of these very delicate, sweet, like mm -hmm. soft moments. In like, in my personal opinion, with wanting to create it via AI, because people are trying to do that, mm -hmm. to me is just very. Um, it's not authentic. It's, yeah, it's not. Yeah. So can maybe elaborate what your what your thoughts on yeah, all of that so are? Yeah. So all with all the new AI stuff, I will say like there are ways that it is unbelievably helpful. So okay. a perfect example is we had a wedding recently. All of the guys were in a groomsman suite, just like carrying on laughing. I heard the sound and I just stepped out of where I was and ran to the groomsman suite, and it was. Everything that was happening, they were just cheering him on. There was a lot of drinking involved. Um, <laughs> but it was enough of a quick moment that I didn't have the chance to fine tune my settings in the way I wanted. And it was a very dark room. So oh, I God. quickly ran in using the settings I'd already had on my camera from the bridal suite, which was white and bright. Oh, God, that's so different. And snapped a photo really quick. And it ended as soon as I did that. So as soon as they realized there was like a presence there, it was like, oh, we should probably behave. But. <laughs> <laughs> in editing it, that was an image that I probably would have trashed because the grain in it was terrible. It was super low light. My settings weren't what I wanted them to be. But with some of the new AI technology, um, Adobe Lightroom has this new denoise feature yep. and it took about 16 minutes for it to process the image. Oh, wow. But it removed all of the grain and reconstructed an image that basically didn't exist. Okay. So it sharpened all the features of the guys and it became an image that like was really valuable that I would have had to trash prior. So in that circumstance, I love AI. In the ways that I don't like it, I feel like in some ways it is going to push photographers to be more creative because if you refuse to use it, um, you just gonna have to get that much better. I think this is when the emotional side of things is gonna be more important because you can't recreate that. I can add a mountain into the back of a photo that's not there. I can add wildflowers into a photo. I can add a whole person that's not supposed to be there, but you can't really recreate the way somebody looks at somebody else in a photo. I, a, I just can't do that. And because I shoot from such a like an authentic point of view, and this is where I start to feel like, God, I really just am old. <laughs> um, I, I pull away from that kind of stuff because yeah. I just feel like it's not real. And that's not why I'm there is to create, you know, fake pixelated, beautiful images that are meant for social media sharing. Um, now with social media, I will say, like we talked about, <laughs> I got a friend here apparently. <laughs> All right. Anyway, continue. <laughs> I will say like, I try and infuse as much of my personality and the way I see photography into my business, because that's how I try and sell myself apart from the other wedding photographers and sound. And I will say Ocala is like busting at the seams with incredibly talented photographers and our photography community here is wonderful and we support each other and everyone's very encouraging. It is a very non-competitive environment and I've not found that anywhere else. So I will say we're very blessed with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, social, social media is an essential evil, but I am a little fearful of some of the AI stuff and I feel like I'm going to feel like a super old person saying that, but I don't know. I can't, I can't get into it. <laughs> I mean, personally, I just because I've become like very much in social media and I, I think at the end of the day, a lot of people are pushing. I talk to people here in Ocala that are in the social media field and it kind of cracks me up only because they they really push for me to use AI yeah. and I'm not against it. Yeah. But I'm with a lot of people that talk about in the in the realm of social media. You're going to have those that make tons of content that are very that mm -hmm. is not relatable. Right. And you're going to have those that have the emotional side. And Absolutely. at the end of the day, the emotion will always win. Yes. And the TikTok and the algorithms are actually pushing more towards that where they want longer content, more storytelling, more story time, more yeah. all of that. So yeah. I I as much as AI I think is going to be as much as people want it to make things easy, because we always want that easy fix. Yeah. 
I don't think it's going to go that way. It might, but and it probably will, but I think those people are going to crash and burn. Yeah. And, and it's no different than photography and when Photoshop, like if you know how to work your camera, mm -hmm. you're editing for the most part, unless you're like in a, it's one of seamless. the, it's seem, yeah, yeah, it's not very much. Yeah. You're, you're just tweaking it just a little yes. bit because you, it only, you can only control so much. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I, I just feel like AI is one of those things that, um, it's either going to take off or it's not. And one of the things that like is really important from our aspect of wedding photography and even like lifestyle sessions is it's an experience in addition to what the after product is. So if I have a family session and I'm playing with the kids and mom and dad are playing with the kids and everybody has had a great time, I can't like my biggest strength in photography is I love to have dads or grooms say that, you know, that really wasn't that bad. I <laughs> thought I was going to hate this and this really wasn't that bad. This was actually kind of fun. Um, and then love the images afterwards. So, or the people that come in, they're like, I'm really awkward. We're really terrible at this. And it's like, me too, but I got you. Like, we're going to get through it. And it's going to be okay. So if you're providing a good experience that makes them want to come back and have more photos done again, that is so much better than posing somebody in front of a green screen and putting a mountain behind them that wasn't there. And it's not, they know it's not real. No. They know there were not wildflowers full in a field that you put them in. They know that. That's not part of the experience. So if you can work harder to do a better job and give them not only a really good experience, but beautiful photos in the aftermath of that, then you've, you've done what they've hired you to do. No, and I, and I can 100% relate to that with being in real estate. Like people can use like a system like Open Door or Redfin or use like their mm -hmm. realtors. And at the end of the day, they're there just, they get paid a salary. They don't yep. care that much about you versus yep. me, an independent realtor, whether it's a team or me, like you at least, I care about you. Right. I have an emotional attachment to you. I want right. you to get a house that you really like. So I, I can 100% yeah. relate to what you're talking about. And it does make the difference. Me into the experience and providing a good experience, mm -hmm. which it sounds like you do an awesome job. And Thank I thought you. that from looking at your photography. Oh, good. I, like I said, I think it's great. Uh, these bugs in me, you know? <laughs> they, it's, it's the shirt. They like the shirt. I guess. Um, <laughs> Is, is experiences so what like what are some like funny interesting experiences that you've had oh uh, so I we've been incredibly lucky that in 10 years of doing this I can only think of like a handful of brides that were just a lot um we have not really had like the textbook bridezilla I will say most of our problems come from the moms okay um mother of the br uh, groom mother of the bride I have had like <laughs> I had we have recently had a bride who they were coming out of their sparkler exit and the mother of the groom stepped out at the end of the sparkler exit and like open face kissed her son on the face. So I mean they have some of these moms have a really hard time letting go and whether it be like letting go of their son, letting go of their daughter or letting go of the spotlight, that's usually where like the problems create. Oh, I have photos of like a mother of a groom like poking a bride in the butt with a sparkler. <laughs> I have brides, moms who have like gone out and changed all of the decor after a florist has put thing up because it wasn't the way they liked it. I mean, oh, Lord. people are very misbehaved at weddings. And yeah, I, I can <laughs> attest, that, yes. A really good time to be able to watch that like from an outside perspective. And my goal has always been to shelter my brides from that as much as possible. Um, that way they don't experience it. But, and then some of like, you see, so you just never know. So like we, I try really hard when I meet my brides at like consultations and stuff to get a good feel for them. And if I feel like what they're looking for is not what I can give, I will a hundred percent send them somewhere else. So if somebody comes at me with like 50 pages of Pinterest photos and was like, I want this and I want this and I want this, they're not a good fit for me. And the reason is because if you send me a pose you love, absolutely. I tell all my brides, like, send me a bunch of pictures that you love. I will screenshot them, keep them on my phone for the day of, and then we will see how we can work those into your wedding. If it's the posing, if it's the lighting, we always try and, like, do that for our brides. But if you come at me with, like, 50 pages of Pinterest photos and they're inconsistent, they're different styles of wedding, they're different lightings of wedding, they're different types of dresses, they're different environments, what I'm getting from that is you just want picture perfect. You don't want to capture your wedding and the mm -hmm. wedding you have planned. Um, I always tell everybody the absolute two best investments you can make on your wedding day are your wedding photographer or videographer and your DJ. Yep. Because your photographer can make, if it's a good photographer, can make a low budget backyard, small wedding look like a million dollars because they see it differently than everybody else does. 
a DJ is going to make sure that everybody has the experience and feels the party and has a great time and ensures that your photographer gets good dancing photos because there's such a lively party going on. Those <laughs> are where you spend your money. But you get these brides sometimes that, and they're often the ones that they're used to, you know, this generation is used to taking pictures of themselves from this angle. This is always more flattering than anything straight on. They are used to Snapchat filters and TikTok filters, and they're used to seeing themselves through a lens that's not real. It's not authentic. And sometimes brides look at their wedding photos and go, well, how come this photo of me that I take of myself is so much more flattering than what my wedding photos are? So my explanation to always is that I always ask brides up front, how much skin correction do you want? Do you want your skin natural the way it is? We do some smoothing just so it's like naturally more appearing for the photo. That's like our baseline. Um, but anybody that wants me to up and beyond change what they look like in terms of, you know, slimming down their features, we try and really hard to stay away from that. And I always tell my brides, I'm going to photograph you from a very flattering angle. We're going to do everything we can for like lighting and stuff, but I want you to look back at your photos and see you, not an AI creation of what you think you look like. Um, but yeah, people are very misbehaved. They, <laughs> that's they, what the sparkler really got me. Oh, the sparklers. So my thing with sparklers, we like been pushing really hard towards like bubble exits and fire we did optics. Bubbles. bubbles are so much fun. They are. I, they're so underrated. I wish more people would do them. Um, especially if you get like the bubble guns that put out like, oh, a, oh huge amount. That's cool. Huge amount I, of We bubbles. didn't think about all that. So sparklers are always like, my thing with sparklers is like, let's get about a hundred people really drunk expect them to line up like cats and give them fire. <laughs> so it's You're never, not wrong. Never goes well. And I, I end up like screaming at people like, I'm going to pour your sparklers up, not out. I'm going to be moving backwards very quickly, not looking where I'm going. I've gotten burned so many times. I've gotten knocked down so many times. They're beautiful photos, but man, are they dangerous. <laughs> people so, don't behave. So don't have sparklers. Don't have sparklers. Don't, don't do, do bubbles. Do something else. So you, I know before you didn't mention it that you were a nurse before mm -hmm. and then went to photography. So I always like to kind of give um, anybody that's looking to go into entrepreneurship, what are some like tips that, because um, even in real estate, a lot of times people are part-time real or part-time their job. Yeah. And you just recently give that, gave that up, yep. which is totally, I applaud that. Thank super you. Awesome. It's it, been amazing. Yeah, yeah. it's hard, but like, it's I think. It's very hard, but it's been incredible. I personally think it drives you to focus more on whatever it is because you've does. got to make the money and yeah. you know you just, it's just that yep. grind. And um, my business, like you can tell I'm I'm now putting everything into it because just the last like six months of business has just been huge compared to what it's been in the years prior. But I think it's just because I'm all in now. Yeah. And I think that makes a big difference. But what are, what would you say some tips that uh, maybe you would give somebody if they're looking to go full time with anything yeah. really? So unfortunately, like business ownership, people usually end up in self-employed because they, they want to continue to do more and do something that they're passionate about. Mm -hmm. So wedding photography is definitely a great example of that, of something that like I love, it fills my cup. I'm always thrilled to go shoot weddings. I never don't want to go. But at the end of the day, it pays my bills. And the biggest things I have to say is you have to learn how to set boundaries. Um, you know, building these relationships with my couples is really important to me, but there have been brides that text me at 3 a.m. because they feel like it's okay because I'm a social media person running a business that they see it as an always available option. Um, and I've got, yeah, I've gotten text message calls late at night and I've, you have to set those boundaries and go, look, you've hired me for your wedding day. That's the only day that I absolutely have to be 100% for you. I'm here to answer questions, but not between this hour and this hour. Like, I have a family. You can't you can't be texting me at 3 a.m. Um, <laughs> yeah. So setting boundaries for yourself with your clients and with yourself. So okay. set up a budget for how much you're willing to reinvest into your business. Take the amount of money that you're making off of your profit. Decide how much of that is going to get reinvested. Because I will say the first couple of years I was in business, I poured everything back into my business. And while it felt good to continue to buy new gear, I didn't need to. I yeah. just needed to learn my stuff better. So kind of monitoring your own spending, really setting boundaries with your clients, saying no to work that doesn't really serve you. So in terms of photography, saying no to clients that aren't your ideal clients that really not going to benefit you in the long run, but are the ideal person for somebody else. Um, making really good connections in your own industry. So one of the best unexpected things that's come out of wedding photography is I have some of the most incredible friendships with the people I work with that are in other, other vendor types of weddings. So I have like a really tight knit group of wedding planners, DJs, caterers, wedding videographers, florists, 
people that I love to work with. And when we all end up at a wedding together, it's like, oh my God, you're here, you're here. Like, these are all my favorite people. This day is gonna go amazing because I trust them. They trust me. They know that I'm gonna send them photos from the wedding to use as marketing without charging them. We take care of each other. We refer to each other on a constant basis. So really see other people in your industry, not as competition, but as a resource. Because if somebody's not an ideal client for you, they are for somebody else. And somebody else is experiencing the same thing and can send them back you know, people towards you too. percent agree with that. I think in real estate, especially with real estate, I, it's just such a dog eat dog thing. I can Every, imagine. Everybody hates each other. Everybody wants the same customer. But I think for me anyway, because I understand social media so well, yeah. I always look at them and they're like, why are you willing to give me this information? I said, because I don't want your market mm -hmm. share. Yeah. I don't right. want it. Like, are right. you gay? Do you want historic homes? Right. Like, do you meet this criteria? And they go, no. I said, okay, then okay. you're not my competition. Right. Like I will exactly. work with anybody. But yeah. at the end of the day, if you're not the right fit for me, mm -hmm. for one, you're not going to be attracted to me. Right. And for two, it probably is not going to work out. No. It's just not going to. No. And we have like really over the last couple of years, somehow we've developed this like really niche market of like, I love nerdy couples. I love alternative couples. I love anybody who's outside of the box and wants something different. Somebody that is building a wedding that is 100% unique to them and against the grain. Like those are my people. And I tell the best stories in those kind of weddings. Um, we had a wedding recently this, this wedding season. It was the bride um, is a medical resident, okay. a doctor. Um, she's going into general surgery and her husband is a philosopher. So like, oh God, okay. That's you can a imagine, combo. like I get chills already. Like the vows were on point. Like he poured <laughs> his heart out. Everybody at this wedding sobbed for essentially eight hours. It was incredible. But their table settings were um, vintage medical textbooks, uh, um, beakers, old oh, medicine wow. bottles. Super I mean, cool. it was creepy and cool in the best way. And I absolutely loved it. Whereas somebody else might come in and go, well, that's a little weird. I but love those it. are my I mean, people. Cool. Like I want, I want more of those. I want somebody who's going to look at Pinterest and go, nope, not for me. Like I'm going to pick out something completely different and we it's kinda, our day. We took Pinterest and put it all together and then made what we did. Cause we had our wedding at, um, at Finney Recreation Center. Okay. My parents live in the villages. So okay. we went there and we had like a very small wedding. Yeah. Like all of probably 30 people. Okay. That's um, about how ours was too. Yeah. We yeah. had it outside and we did what we did. And then we went inside and we only had like a very small portion at the, like at the wedding yeah. like ceremony part. Yeah. 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 Because we didn't want, it, they, the villages were picky. They threw yeah. it. Um, but inside it was like a tea party. And then like, oh, it was I like a that. couple, a couple, it looked like that kind of, and with old books. And I we, love that. We had all kinds, it was very quirky. It was very us. And it was, it's funny because that came into trend like now. Yes. And we were like, where was all of we this? We were trendsetters. I know. <laughs> Cause we were like, where was all of this stuff when we wanted, cause we couldn't find. You like, had to come we, up with yourself. Yeah. We had to, we had to thrift everything. Oh, the we still, thing, man. we had, I love and we were supposed to get married in 2020. Uh -huh. And you'll probably think this is funny cause you probably heard these stories. My wife had all these books because each centerpiece was books with like pearls and old jewelry yeah. and teacups. Love that. And that was mm -hmm. like the set, that was like the centerpieces. We carried around these books forever forever and i had to move it from two houses and there was like a <laughs> lot of books and then yeah, yeah. I was like, I said, and then we were like questioning whether when we were going to get married i said well we're going to get married before we buy another house because i'm not moving the books again no the books have got to go books. right um in january my husband and i got married of january 21 oh, okay yeah so got you. definitely definitely covid um but ours was the same thing we got married at silver springs because it's a very okay. like heart place for me um our wedding was very like dark and moody. I wore a black leather jacket for most of our reception. We had our um, centerpieces were, we had these like dark burgundy red uh, velvet tablecloths. Okay. Our centerpieces were actual um, vintage book pages, like laid oh. back and forth moss all over the tables. And um, I spent so much time thrifting these like uh, brass candlesticks with black, black candle, Ugh. tall black um, taper yeah. candles on them. It was very dark. It was that very moody. Cool. We loved it. Yeah. But it was the same thing. It was like totes of this stuff. And when we sold our house last year, it was like, okay, lit all this is going to go. just go right to Goodwill. Yeah. yeah. Just go take all of it. <laughs> we relate to the, like having, to, yeah, this is all but it was you guys, yeah. And yeah, it was, was you know, and now you can look back on your photos and be like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't buy into the trends. We did no, what we, we liked and what we wanted. And, and our parents hated it. We didn't yeah, care. But that's <laughs> okay. Care. That's okay. Because if it was up to your parents, it would probably be like dusty gray and baby blue and very eighties. And, and probably, yeah, yeah, you know, and so, and they got to do it at their own wedding. So you get to do what you want. Yeah, thank God. I don't want to no, it would have been, <laughs> it was fun, but it's been a pleasure talking talking to you, yeah, you and we too. and this was really fun good um, i'm glad i so, had a good time good i'm glad and um i hope you have a good day thanks you and, too all right thank yeah. you guys for watching have a great one Thanks.